having a great conversation with Kim from Sigma uh, regarding this podcast, which is all about empowering women in construction alongside our campaign that we decided to do together. So this is very interesting. And so I'm not going to do all the talking today. You'll be really pleased to know, but I'm going to let Kim share her story with us and a little bit more about what she does at Sigma. So would you like to just let us know a bit more about the organisation and how you got started? Uh, hi, Georgina. Thank you very much. Um, yes, Sigma, um, I started um, about eight years ago and we are predominantly a embroidery and printing company for workwear for all sorts of industries from construction to trades to manufacturing to engineering companies. Um, and throughout that time, we've grown significantly, but we found that um, the one thing that was missing was that um, there's always clothes available for men um, and everything's in a unisex supposed fit. However, we were finding it was really tricky to get, get um, women appropriately dressed, particularly in the construction and manufacturing industry, um, because the high-vis clothing, for example, was designed for a man, not designed for a woman. Um, so we felt that we really needed to address this inequality in the workplace. Um, and so we've also got a sideline, which is um, Jean and Josie Workwear for Women. And that's a purely dedicated website, purely with clothing on just for women, um, mainly aimed at the construction and manufacturing industry. But we also um, sell other things as well. So we also do it for catering, for health and beauty, all, all other work wear as well. So that's just a bit of a summary. That's fantastic. So Jean and Josie, women's wear for construction industry around the kind of the high vis jackets and so forth. And, and what's it been like since you, you know, decided to have that focus? Well, um, the women that have bought from us have been really pleased because they've struggled to find clothing. And we also supply things like um, flame retardant bras and um, clothing for um, during your pregnancy, which people were finding they were having to have high vis trousers and put elastic bands around the buttons or hold them together or sew them together and then release them as they, as they grew. Um, so they found those particular areas, they found them really hard to source. So they're very happy that they now have clothing that actually fits them. Well, that's fantastic. And, and what is it that really inspired you to do this because it's quite it feels like quite an innovative even though it should be very normal right um, yeah. it feels like quite a big thing to do to have a specific section of um the business just for the women I mean what was it that really gave you that push to go to go that far I think it was mainly because um when we get the orders from larger companies particularly they always forgot to choose for women so you'd say well, these are the clothing this comes in lady fit this comes in unisex and they're like oh yeah well we'll just order unisex that's fine that covers everybody um we don't need to order any lady fit and then um they would then maybe come back a few weeks later and say oh actually this doesn't fit um our really small ladies or this doesn't fit our different shaped ladies you know and um, and so we'd then say to them well what about the lady fit version so um, it just felt like there was a lot of larger companies out there that just weren't even considering women. And I just felt that that was wrong. And it, every woman should have the opportunity to look and feel good in their uniform. And that's kind of Sigma's ethos, is that everybody should walk away with uniform that they are proud to wear and that they actually want to wear. And women weren't getting that. So we felt that if we had a dedicated website, then that would also give those women the opportunity when their employees don't, the employers don't provide the women's workwear. That's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And there is this kind of, um, I guess, thing around construction and this stigma that, you know, it is just male dominated. And um, and actually, you know, if there are women, they should just be able to to, you know, fit into all the men's stuff and fit into the men's culture and all of these like things that are just assumed, isn't it? So it's really yes. interesting that that was happening immediately. 
And then there was a bit of a realization that, hold on a minute, we need to cater for women because we actually yes. have women that work with us. <laughs> Indeed. Um, so that's a very interesting um, thing to, to have thought through, but also to be able to have um, been able to provide. Yeah, I think also <laughs> yeah. we've had, um, when I first started out many, like eight years ago, there wasn't that many women in the trades industry and there wasn't that many women in the construction industry. So it probably there was probably only one or two at a time, whereas now there's so many more, which is fantastic. But now companies need to catch up. They just need to catch up and realise that they need to offer the same as they offer their men employees. They need to offer the women employees clothing that fits them. That's great. That was actually going to be my question to you to sort of look at, you know, what the difference has been maybe from the beginning in the early stages of, of getting that set up to to now. And what would you say maybe the differences in numbers around, you know, the amount of kind of women that might be looking for appropriate clothing to at the beginning to sort of now? What What's the difference just roughly? Roughly, I would say initially there was probably 1% in that kind of area. Now you're probably looking 10 to 15% and it's growing. Um, wow. So I reckon if you know another five years and I think you'll be looking at sort of 20 to 30%, which would be fantastic to get a more, I know, more women into the industry. Excellent, excellent. And this is it. So we actually met, so myself and, and Kim actually met on a course. Yes. <laughs> and, and we, so obviously in BUD, we do things around inclusion and we're really focused on thinking about how can we close the gap between, you know, inequality and the construction industry is, is really quite clearly um, an industry where it is male dominated. There are some changes happening. And I know there's been lots of, you know, campaigns around trying to get more women into um, construction. But with what Kim was doing, we said, OK, right, this is seems like a match made in heaven. What can we do um, as a real kind of tangible thing just to bring some more awareness um, that that actually there's opportunities for women to have the clothing that's right for them and also um, more opportunities for women to get involved in construction and that actually there's a place for them too so thinking about you know um, women that are um, that are looking at different career options and even those you know younger women um, that, that are actually thinking about right what can I get into and just saying that construction's an option for you yes, yes. yeah which is another part of the Jean and Josie website um, is because we also felt that there wasn't necessarily enough encouragement in schools and in mentors to encourage young girls into these kind of industries so every time anybody purchases anything on the Jean and Josie website we do a donation to a, a charity called the Girls Network and they are designed um, as a group of people who will mentor young girls usually from a disadvantaged background to show them that whatever career they want to do it is available to them it doesn't necessarily have to be construction, but they're showing them that they shouldn't be held back and they should only go into the traditional female jobs, that they actually can go into a wide range of jobs and, you know, their future is in their hands. So the Girls Network provide a great support to help young girls get into whatever industry they want to. And we felt that that was very much in keeping with the whole ethos of the Jean and Josie website absolutely that's uh, that's brilliant and I think especially nowadays I think it's so important for organizations to think outside of themselves because clients are looking for organizations that are really trying to have more of an impact just outside of right you know we've got a, a standard business here but how are we affecting the world you know what is the change that we're bringing into this sort of landscape and I mean what would you say so you mentioned earlier on about you know organizations kind of half waking up <laughs> to the fact that there are women that you know have different needs around clothing um but what would you say kind of wider around the construction industry and, you know, ways that they can start to be more inclusive and entice more women? What, what advice would you give them? I think they really need to start engaging with colleges, um, particularly those um, and apprenticeships and making sure that they're letting the colleges know that they're open to all 
whatever sex you are, um, to be able to go and have an apprenticeship in their company. I think they need to start advertising more, saying, you know, choosing current women that are in the industry as role models Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully maybe using some of them as mentors as well for these young girls to show them this is a career that you can get into and this is a career that you will enjoy. Absolutely agree, definitely. It's one of those things that if you can't see somebody that looks like you in that position, then you almost think, you know, that's not an option for me. Yeah. So definitely doing some of those case studies around the women that are currently working in the industry and really amplifying that and, and, and letting those women have a louder voice in, in their organisations, I think will make a massive difference. And, and what would you say around the kind of clothing side of things? You know, I know that you, um, you know, you do have specific contracts with organisations, but what would you say um, to them around clothing but also making women feel more comfortable in general I think, I think that's the main thing isn't it making the women feel comfortable because if you're comfortable in your clothing you'll be happier working and back to our ethos is the, we want you to be proud of what you wear um, so they really just need to remember that you don't want to look like a sack of potatoes you don't want to hold your trousers together with some elastic bands because they don't quite fit you when you're pregnant or you know, you shouldn't have to go without a bra because it's not flame retardant. All of these things just make that small bit of difference, make you feel included and make them feel as if they're actually wanted in the job. And it's not like an addition for them. Yeah, definitely. It was interesting because I did an interview um, quite recently and we were, she was saying, the lady was saying that she actually took a selfie in her workwear and um, it got lots of lots of um, attention on social media. So I'm imagining, Kim, maybe we should get a few of these women together who are very proud and do a little bit of a, you know, bit of a photo shoot and, and, and showcase them. Maybe that's our next step. Yes, I think it could be. <laughs> Absolutely. I think why not? Why not? Um, and, and so obviously we, we got together. We saw myself and Kim, we got together and we decided to do this this campaign. Um, and so, Kim, what would you hope to see as a result of this campaign? What, what sort of effect would you like it to have? I'd like it to have an effect that more awareness, more awareness of those companies that are out there, that they need to be more inclusive, that they need to be giving the options to the women and they need to start engaging with colleges now. Um, so the future generation can be included and not feel like a spare part and not feel like it's just an addition that they are actually part of the company and part of the team, really. That's what I want people to achieve. I think women, young girls, to be able to know that they can move into this industry and then those that are in there, I want them to feel included in the industry. Yeah, and I really love that kind of motto and that ethos around feeling proud because it's not just necessarily only in what you wear, but it's in who you are and what you do. Um, so I think that that really resonates with me in terms of making sure that women can, you know, kind of represent in that space and say, yeah, of course, we can do this. You know, we definitely can. Um, so that's great to hear. And I think also, you know, from from my perspective, I think it's so important for this inclusion for organisations specifically in construction to, I guess, take a bit of a an inventory like what are we doing right now what is happening right now what could we do better this is not about you know having a go it's about recognizing that that actually there's room for change and so a lot of what we do in bud is really focused on not just having a talking shop because we can all talk about things right we can have a good exactly a good conversation about stuff but actually what do we want to do and so I really loved um, Kim that you were talking specifically about apprenticeships about going into colleges about um, really making that opportunity available um, to women and having maybe some focused kind of marketing strategies specifically around that but evaluating what was happening what's actually happening at this present moment and and I think having some forecasts and thinking actually you know you mentioned that you started off with kind of one percent being women and now it's kind of 10 to 15 and that idea that it could be 30 percent at least I think is brilliant so you know let's get some tangibles in there with with some of these organizations and and let's see what can actually happen 
Um, and that's one of the things that we're really hoping to do and um, working alongside some of these organizations and thinking, right, what's the strategy so that we can, you know, be proud of our organization and say, you know, we began here and we've got a strategy to get us here. And this is exactly how we're going to do it. So very, very exciting times. It's yes. all about being the change that you want to see, right? Definitely. <laughs> you can't just sit back and hope it will happen. You've got to do something about it. Excellent. And, and I love that, that Sigma's done that, where you've looked at, OK, there's a bit of a gap here. You know, we're getting orders in, we're growing, which is fantastic for an organisation. But actually, there's something here that we really need to take notice of. How are we going to do that and how are we going to have impact? And then how are we going to have even more impact with working with the Girls Network? So it's, it's yes. fantastic. It really um, does chime in terms of the things that that we love that organisations do in terms of so yeah so in terms of leading positive change so that really does touch my heart that it's a great example for other organizations to think about so we all play we all have our part to play in in, in change and construction companies have one part but you know sigma's taking up their space and and bud's taking up their space so it's like what else is everybody else going to do so that we can you know bring more equality and build a more fairer society and opportunities for all to, to take part so this is Definitely. very exciting indeed <laughs> lovely thank you so much Kim I That's am okay. um, looking forward to working with you some more around this and I definitely think we should get that photo shoot ready get some get you know keep asking the ladies that come in are you up for it are you ready to be proud and stand tall and we can get that make that happen that would be brilliant and all your work that you're doing it to include women is fantastic so thank you for your work oh thank you so much brilliant well kim bye-bye for now bye-bye thank you <laughs>